All right, we're here at the MIT Media Lab workshop Abu Dhabi. I'm uh, sitting with Habib Haddad, the CEO of Wanda, and of course, Joe Ido, the director of uh, the MIT Media Lab. He's a man who wears many hats, including a board member of uh, the New York Times, um, Sony Corp, investor in Twitter and Path. Joe, tell us what's occupying your time nowadays. So, a lot of my time right now is trying to change the Media Lab to the sort of networked global generation. So it used to be mainly a container where a lot of openness was inside, but we're trying to turn it into a global platform that has a lot more impact. And so this uh, workshop we're doing here is part of creating the, the new Media Lab network. Interesting. So you're here uh, in the region for this workshop in specific? Yes. It's to, the, uh, the workshop is a key component, and I'm also meeting um, companies here. Partners. partners Respective yeah. partners. partners. Yes. Can you tell us more about the workshop? Yeah. So the workshop is based on a thing that we've been doing in other regions. Uh, in India, for instance, we've mm -hmm. been doing this for three years. And the workshop is uh, calling on really interesting people looking for submissions for proposals from across the region. And then uh, we select the uh, from that list and okay. we bring our students and faculty. I think we have over a dozen of them here. And we work together with uh, um, with people in that region, so for instance in India with India, and, and now after three years, half of our students uh, we meet uh, at the workshop because it's really hard to understand the Media Lab unless you interact with us because it's more of a, a philosophy and a way of doing things. And it's also very important for us to meet the students before we recruit them to the Media Lab. So a lot of this is kind of a recruiting thing. And I think the number of students that you have has a lot to do with the bandwidth that you have with the region. So we only have a couple of Arab students. So the amount of connection we have with this region is still quite narrow. So the idea, main idea is to really try to increase the surface area, um, to you know, bring students from here that we find and try to recruit them for the Media Lab and also give my faculty and students exposure to the region. And then more, also I think for, for this event we, we call across the region, not just in the UAE, so we have people from but from Algeria sure. and Jordan, Palestine, and Jordan and yeah. Amman and Amman well, Egypt and, and, and Lebanon. <laughs> Algeria. And, and, we have people Algeria. from Palestine. Palestine. And, and so have, seeing them work together also I think is really important because I want to get our message out. Sure. Um, but we will hopefully do this regularly. Um, sure. Should be the first thing. Sure, yeah, regularly in different cities as well throughout yeah. the region, yeah. So that's that's really the, the, the core value of this is that the more you do it, the the more you can sort of find students and, and, and sort of enrich the Media Lab experience in a specific That's region. That's where the platform the part comes in, right? This is why yeah. changing the Media Lab to become, to go up to places rather than everything happening in one place. And I think the, the thing about the platform and, and part of what we're doing here is, you know, just a couple of decades ago, to try anything, like Aspen Movie Map, which was, you know, with the laser disc, and everything costs a lot of money. Sure. So going to MIT to do everything made sense, because there's so much equipment, and viewers are expensive and networks were expensive, but now everything is so cheap that there's innovation happening everywhere in startups and you don't need to be at the Media Lab to create things. So we can come in here and, and do things and it's also important because a lot of the, uh, in this region but in other regions, people are focused on building these large institutions with lots of money and funding, but actually the really cool stuff, a lot of it is happening. Um, with low cost, level, with a yeah. startup level, and actually in three days you can get a lot done. And so part of our DNA is to show that you can get to um, a pretty solid um, place um, with, with very little resources. And, and for us, what's important is now we, we, we have to look outside of the lab because there's so much innovation happening everywhere and we want to connect to everyone. It's a long tail effect. Yeah. On the edges, innovation is coming and so, but in terms of constraints, you talk about the limited resources and the people innovating just with, with a bit of money with a bit of um, with a lot of obstacles. Do you see that a trend that is pushing people in emerging markets or not in the heart of innovation as initially described by the MITs and the, and the Ivy League schools, but happening at the edges? And is that something that's happening more and more because of the constraints? Yeah, so I think there's naturally innovation happening all over the place. But I think that we have some methodology and we have some know-how that can help innovation. So, you know, understanding hardware, understanding circuits, understanding open source. Because a lot of the, um, a lot of, all they need is a little bit of confidence, a little bit of knowledge, and they can unlock things. And, 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 and to your point, you don't necessarily need as much uh, 
so energy power, but sometimes you may need to know which chipset to get from China sure. or how, how to use this thing. And, and, and for us, we learn what sorts of things are useful by talking to people in those regions. I, mean, I think it, obviously in Abu Dhabi, we, 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 we have a lot of um, you know, resources around here, but if, the next one we're doing is in Nairobi in, in a much more difficult sure. area. And we learn so much by doing the work in, the, in those spaces. And, and then the other thing I would say, in the old media lab, we used to have this term demo or die. Yeah. You know, so in universities, it was publish or perish. Yeah. Media lab was demo or die. But now we're starting to use the term deploy or die. Okay. So you actually have to make something into the real world. So, so for us here, also what's important is it's different from doing it in the lab. We're actually working with people who are, have their real problems or real ideas, right. and they will turn into companies. So, and then I saw somebody working on, you know, um, building farms on top of homes in Egypt, and yeah, and, 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 and and so so this is this is um, I think you know really interesting to see real work. Going on. Question for you, Joyce. So so a lot of innovation is happening in the region as well as you mentioned, but moving from the innovation part to deploying is somewhat let's say accessible but then from that to becoming a business and building around it a productive uh, job jobs around that that becomes a tough part what do you think you know would be the formula for that uh... well, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think i think it really is i think it really is that you need... means spark by the way oh, okay. so, <laughs> It, but but I, I think the, the, the missing thing is I think people are importing entrepreneurs but not importing sophisticated investors. Mm -hmm. And I think the key to success is having smart, early stage, sophisticated investors. And you have to kind of grow those. So I think that's one piece because you because a lot of the government funds and things, they only want to put big chunks of money. But you yeah. can't put big chunks into little ideas. So so I think that's that's one piece. And then also allowing large companies, you, you know all these problems, right? Large companies working with small companies. But but I, I think that this is where, you know, giving this a little bit of structure, you know, giving it some brand so that, like, because to be honest, one of the great things about the Media Lab is we get really smart students and their parents are like, oh, they're getting a PhD at MIT when, when, when we're running around making things here, you know, and it yeah. gives people permission, yeah. especially from their parents. And I think part of this is also getting the feeling that you have permission. Um, because really, I think it's the money is important, but a lot of it is they, they kind of hold back because they're afraid of the risk. But they, should I really be doing this? Is this this is too much fun? Is this okay? You know. So, so this, this comes the brand, the brand of MIT or the brand of of of, 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 of top universities is very. I mean, it's not important as a brand, but it's important of what how you leverage it. And it's kind of a, a, a wall, and behind it you can go and and mess up and do things and be sloppy, but then maybe we could get the market and then the brand can protect you from that. Basically. At least short term, you know, I think that uh, um, the, the brand, I mean, to be honest, I mean, the brand does attract a certain quality people and also when we do these workshops, we get a lot of people who, who, who come because they, they want to be associated with, with something like this. But once they get here, they realize, oh, there's, it's not magic, I just have to free myself up. True. And some of the people may end up at MIT and some of the people may go and do their own thing. But I think really a lot of this has to do with confidence. And when they realize, you know, like I, I had some kids when I was working in Detroit afterwards, they said, no, I was sitting next to an MIT kid and my idea won, you know, and, and just to realize that, you know, it's, it, that everyone can be part of this, this thing if they have, the, they have the energy. So you mentioned something interesting, which is financial support and the difference between sort of smart capital and the more institutionalized investment. Um, after you joined the MIT Media Lab, you launched P14, which is a, a, a fund, so to speak, that invests in former Media Lab students and helps them uh, not just with financials, but with uh, uh, other tools to kick off their businesses. Yeah. Uh, can you speak more to that and how the region could learn from that, a fund like that? Yeah, so we, we just started, so we did the first one last year, but it's, it's really to help students after they graduate. Um, and again, Media Lab is a little bit unique because we get a lot of students that come out with ideas that they want to do and make companies from. And we don't, we in the past haven't given them much support. It was like once they graduate, it was like see you later. Um, or you can join the Alumni yeah. Association. But this was really a postgraduate program for students who wanted to create companies. Um, they kind of work together. We support them with you know the basic things that uh, like you know, accounting, Introduction to entrepreneurs, introduction to VCs, helping them with the presentation, um, and we're, we're 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 working on it. But but I think um, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a new thing. I think um, 
to structurally to have a, a so the media lab is also unique because it's funded by companies so we're giving the companies the opportunity to invest in the ideas because the old days what happened was the big companies like the stuff that came out of the media lab like kindle or or lego mindstorms or guitar hero they were commercialized by the, the member companies because in the old days I mean, it's still sometimes today, but ideas get built basically by big companies. But now, so many of the ideas go to startups, yep. and a lot of our companies don't want to build it; they just want to work with the startup. Right. So if you're, yep. if you're if you're you know British Telecom and you have see a great idea, you don't want to make it. You want somebody to make it, and then you want to buy it. Absolutely. So from the company's perspective, a startups is a great way to see the demo they see in the media lab turn into something they can buy. And so they've been very supportive of that as well. Nice, Joey. Uh, what tips do you have for people to actually build that kind of confidence in them? Uh, what surround them, surround them with, with themselves with other people like like minded or or, or you know, just prototype or, or what kind of tips? I think people it's a cliche, but I'll say it. I think failing is, is is the best because what happens when you fail is you create a fact, right? So like if you if you hire a consultant or if you think a lot and say if I do this I may fail this will probably work you still only have a theory yeah but if you fail or if you, you succeed confirm. you have a fact and usually what happens when you fail is it doesn't hurt as much as you thought it would yeah usually so i use snowboarding as a good example yeah. snowboarding you don't want to fall but every time you fall it kind of hurts but you get used to it and then you get better at not falling and when you go through a turn in snowboarding if you think you're going to fall, you fall. Do yeah. you, you know that? You get yeah, like you that. that and, and your body has to be kind of relaxed. Yeah. And once you realize that, you get good at it. Now imagine you were reading a book about snowboarding and got a PhD in snowboarding. Yeah. And then they threw you on the slope. You would never be yeah. able to.